All right. So I figured while everyone was sitting around getting used to listening to poetry, I'd drop a love poem and get that out of the way. All right. Um, so in Houston, we always have poets that come up and talk about revolution. But it's really funny because we call them the Mr. Fist Up. And the Mr. Fist Up is the poet who has all the problems and all the facts and stats about little girls being touched all around the world and wars and people dying. But they have no solutions, no website to visit, no 1-800 number to call, nothing you can do. So I was complaining to my friend and he said, well, you can't bitch about people bitching and not being about it if you yourself are bitching about it but not doing anything to solve it. So he challenged me to write a revolution poem that was practically applicable. So this is my best shot. There's a revolution. And sitting on our front doors like babies on church steps is being fought as we speak. But it's not one of guns. It's not one of bombs. And it won't be won by fighting in the streets. It's a revolution of love. A compassionate wave dying to drown humanity in its wake. This revolution is being fought by girls in Kentucky teaching ESL classes to immigrant mothers for free. And when she speaks to them, she speaks for me. And so we can all share peace. No one is truly free. So set down your M16s and get strapped to the teeth with smiles. This battlefield has no green zone, so stay vigilant. Keep an open heart at all times. Free your brother's mind through conversation, sincere communications. May the way showers stand up, rise out of the marshes, put your vocal cords on mountains like a mass of people's ears is the closest we may ever get to God's attention. This revolution will be won in traffic jams by adding an extra finger when we wave. Because peace is the perfect prescription for road rage, so just smile. Stitch the freeways bumper to bumper to reach our destination. The realization that we are all one, so please open up your arms and let me love myself completely, because you are the brother I haven't had time to share beer with yet. And you're the love of my life we just never met. And we are a family who easily forgets that we are the crappy customers that turn our days into shit. So the next time you're in line, and that lady with that screaming baby can't shut that brat up! Remember that mean mugging infants has never helped calm them down. So just breathe. Look at that child in awe and let it be because God lives in those eyes. And he doesn't appreciate you using yours as weapons, throwing daggers, mentally tearing down creations that he considers precious. Y'all, we're 3D Corel, the pictures hung on heaven's refrigerator. He didn't ask for your critiquing. So please, look in the mirror and see the reflections of perfection that lie inside you like secrets on the tongues of gurus. I can see the zipper on your meat suit. And it's not you. The sooner you figure this out, well, the better off we'll all be. Because there's a revolution at hand to replace soldiers with aid workers in Afghanistan to send blankets to Africa laced with teardrops shed from watering altar eyes. While my grandmother cries for Jesus to save the whole freaking world. I want to put my palms on her cheeks like grandmother. Listen to me, these hands are more than just tools to make prayers. They're the answers to them. But you have to use them. So unclasp your white knuckle grip. Release your steering wheel, roll down your window, hand a dollar to a veteran, remind God that we're still listening. And even though he sends them from all the way up there, we can still hear his prayers and are tuned in, eagerly awaiting further instructions in this revolution. Thank you. Yeah, one more. Go ahead. And uh, just to let you guys know, in case anybody's interested, I got some CDs in the back. They're usually like 5 and $10, but since this is like a little intimate setting, y'all come talk with me, and we'll work out, we'll negotiate, because I uh, need some money. <laughs> also, the, uh, don't forget, tonight over at the Cray Place, 8 p.m., uh, there's going to be a slam. I'm going to be featuring out there with Chris Harpster, so y'all come through. Um, this is my last piece. Thank y'all for listening as much as you did. Upon introduction to the United States Marine Corps, he was informed that his uniformed ass was now government property. He wore a half-cocked grin like a death shroud, proudly nodding in compliance, but his faith weighed on him like a lead albatross. Spun like a quarter on a bar top, he landed halfway around the world, playing cops and robbers with real guns. No more take-backs, no more stopping the game for cars. Instead, opening fire. He played judge and executioner till he forgot the necessity of juries. His morality flew on Icarus wings, not tempered for hell's oven. M16 shells dripped red wax in sand traps, replacing his dreams with snuff film scenes. As a boy, 
He had never truly conceived war. Never imagined in childhood games how bullet holes look hung between the eyes of a nine-year-old. How mothers cry differently when tears are shed over spilt potential. He couldn't wear his WWJD bracelet on the battlefield and still look God in the eyes at night. His prayers began to float crooked, telling himself he was only doing a civic duty protecting our mothers from terrorists. But guardian angels don't carry the Grim Reaper sickle. Mortgage to be made or not. After a long talk with his creator, Private Michael Barnes turned in this statement, quote, I've been trying to find a way to justify being a good soldier and do so while still being a good Christian, but I can no longer justify spending my short time in this world participating in or supporting wars. I must try to save souls, not help take them. Apparently, Gabriel whispers and bullets nearly missed. Late night mother's prayers and a divinely inspired brick wall stands. Sir, no, sir, I will not kill. Tastes like freedom, falling off the tongue of a pure heart. Slips like silver drops into the eyes of every person he didn't kill today. September 24, 2008, Private Michael Barnes was granted a conscientious objective status with an honorable discharge after experiencing a religious awakening in Iraq. So now it's our turn to call our troops back to their families, communities, and country before we let that motherfucker call them home.